Hi, I'm Zibby Owens, and you're listening to the award-winning podcast, Moms Don't Have Time to Read Books. If you like this podcast, you will love my new anthology called Moms Don't Have Time to Have Kids. Check it out, and you'll hear from 49 authors about all sorts of things moms don't have time to do. All the authors have been on this podcast. Also, check out my TikTok, at with Zibby and Tracy, my other podcast, Sex Talk with Zibby and Tracy. Check out Moms Don't Have Time to Write on Medium. And of course, my new publishing company called Zibby Books. And now back to our daily author interview site and a quick hello from some of my kids. Hi. Hi. Hello. Enjoy the show. Happy New Year, everyone. I hope you all had a great break. I wanted to let you know about something that I've been talking a lot about on social media at Zibby Owens, which is the hashtag 22 and 22 challenge. We are at Zibby Books. We are encouraging everybody like all of you to visit 22 bookstores in 2022. And we're going to provide a whole series of incentives for every five visits and you'll be entered to win a $500 shopping spree and you'll get fun things like bookmarks and all the rest. Plus, you'll be part of a great community of people all helping support bookstores, authors, and more. We're really, really excited about it. If you want to join, sign up. You just go to 22in22.net. That's 22in22.net and click I'm in and put your information. And then every time you go to a bookstore, you just quickly go back on the site and click log a bookstore visit. And then we'll be keeping track and we'll be following up with all of your different achievements and awards and everything. So please sign up, spread the word, 22 and 22, get your friends to join and start visiting bookstores and it'll be really fun and exciting. So here's to a wonderful 2022. I'm so excited that you're listening to my podcast and doing all the fun things that I have been trying to bring into the world. So here we go, 2022, hashtag 22 and 22. Jamie Attenberg is the author of I Came All This Way to Meet You, Writing Myself Home. Jamie has written about food, travel, books, relationships, and urban life for the New York Times Magazine, the Wall Street Journal, the Sunday Times, Slate, and others. All This Could Be Yours was published in 2019 by HMH Books and Serpent's Tale in the UK, as well as in Italy, Germany, China, and Brazil. Her work has been published in a total of 16 languages. Her debut collection of stories, Instant Love, was published in 2006, followed by the novels The Kept Man and The Melting Season. Her fourth book, The Middlesteens, was published in October of 2012. It appeared on the New York Times bestseller list and was published in 10 countries in 2013. Wow, I feel like that just happened. I can't believe how many years ago it was. It was also a finalist for both the Los Angeles Times Book Prize for Fiction and the St. Francis College Literary Prize. A fifth book, St. Maisie, was published in 2015 and has been optioned by Fable Pictures. Her sixth book, All Grown Up, was published in 2017 and was a national bestseller, appearing on numerous year-end lists. Welcome, Jamie. Thank you so much for coming on Moms Don't Have Time to Read Books. I'm so excited to discuss your latest book and all your work and everything. I'm so excited to be here. Thank you for having me. Okay. First, your latest. Please tell listeners what your latest book is about and what inspired you to write it. And then I want to delve into all the stories and essays and everything because, oh my gosh, so much to discuss. Okay. Well, it's called, I Came All This Way to Meet You, Writing Myself Home. And it's It's really a story of developing a creative life for yourself. And, you know, a lot of it is set in my late 30s and and throughout my 40s. I just turned 50 like two months ago or a month ago, something like that. Thank you very much. I feel good. I feel good being 50. I'm all right. I'm hanging in there. And so it's really about, you know, it is about being a writer, but I think it's kind of more than that. It's just about sort of uncovering your voice and figuring out who you want, who you want to be and kind of the, you know, the struggles you know, as a woman and as an American and, and as like a citizen of the world too, like there's a lot of traveling all around the world in it as well. And so I just, I don't know, I, I think I was like looking back at my life and I was ready to to talk about it and the things that I'd learned and the mistakes that I'd made too, for better or for worse. This <laughs> <laughs> there's so much. I mean, first of all, I can't believe how many jobs you have done. On, like when I read your first chapter is about, you know, the many temp jobs and things you've fallen into over the years on your way to becoming this creative, amazing author, right? And all the experiences. So that was like mind boggling. Then your tour over the whole United States in your rattly car, Mm -hmm. you know, with your snow crunching boots and, you know, the journey, the way you've like described the journey in so many ways from like the lens of beds to trips to, I mean, it's just really amazing. And I don't know, from the minute I started reading, I was like, oh my gosh, this book is so good. So 
Thank you so much. Yeah, I, I mean, it's not, there's no direct path, I think, to, especially in the in a creative life. I don't think there's any sort of, no one says, okay, if you just do A, it's not like going to like med school or something like that. Yeah. I mean, not that that is easy at all. I'm not right. saying that, but you know, there's definitely like, you know, you know what you're going to do the first year, the second year, that kind of thing. For me, I was really just kind of cast out in the world after I graduated from college. And I was like, I don't really actually know what I'm doing or how to become a writer, but I'm just going to kind of fumble my way through it. And, and I was really inspired by other working artists, like working musicians. That's why I went out on the road so much. I was like, let me just go out and see people and meet. I love meeting people. I love meeting people who love books so much. Like we're all just like the same kind of nerd, you know? So I just, and also I would, I think, you know, leading any sort of artistic life, any kind of life, really, it's about being curious. And I, I definitely have a curiosity for the world and see, and just sort of seeing, seeing what's out there. Totally. Are you based in New York? Are you in New York now, by the way? No, I live in New Orleans now. I moved here about six years ago. Oh, wow. New Orleans. Okay. I was in New New York for a really long time and I thought I was going to be there forever. And then I fell in love with New Orleans. So I'm here now. I just wanted to read just so that people listening know how amazing a writer you are. If they haven't read, I read The Middle Students, by the way, when it came out like forever ago. So I was so excited. I mean, to even see you had a new book coming out, but I mean, I know you've had some in between and all that, but you have this one passage about makeup and how being the daughter of a motherless mother that I loved that whole, I mean, it's not an essay. It's like, I don't know how even how to just chapter, I guess chapter, but they feel like essays in a way because they're so self-contained and. I know it it was like, uh, people kind of want to call it an essay collection. And I, I mean, whatever you want to call it is fine. But to me, it just feels like a book of stories about my life. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't matter. The thank way. you. Thank you for picking up on that. Cause it is kind of, a, it's a tricky thing, but it's also like, just enjoy it. Just enjoy yeah, exactly. It. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it's also hard when you think about your own life, like you want to put it all, like if you're, if you're talking about a topic, right. You want to put it all in. I, that's that, I'm not saying that very well. Like when I've been trying to write about like my own life, it's like, well, I, people say like, well, don't like tidy it up with a bow at the end. And I'm like, well, I know, I, I know, I get it. But like, that's that section. Now I want to move on to like this section. So it can be it's, tricky. It's really hard to org it. I mean, I wrote, this book was 20,000 words longer, the first draft. Okay. And so then I, cause I, I, you know, I was like, I just have to write it all down. That's what my editor said to me, just put it all down there and then we'll carve out a story from it. And so really there's like a, a, a much more X-rated version. <laughs> Oh, kind of. I mean, whatever, you know, like it's, the, it's, it, I'm glad that I wrote it all and got it all down there, but there, you have to sort of, at some point it's not, it becomes less about you and more about how are you communicating this story to the world and what do you want people to take away from it? So that's, that's when it gets tricky, like the, the putting it into a box kind of thing, because life is not put into a box at all. Right. There are no easy endings. There's usually you don't even get a sense of closure. Like that's kind of a the myth that we aspire to, but it's really difficult. But actually you still have to, when you're writing a book, you still have to figure out a way to like present it to the, to the world. Yes. It's hard. Writing is hard. Writing is hard. Yes. <laughs> Sorry, I've interrupted you. Sorry. Interrupted me. What are you, by talking about writing? No, that's the whole point. I love it. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, it's, it's, and, and writing about your own life is a particular brand of hard, right? I mean, there's fiction, like everybody has their own thing, but when you're mining, the data is only from your memory, essentially. And you'd have are to- Are you craft. writing a memoir now? I am. I, well, it's coming out in July, so I should say I'm Mm. finished. I mean, it is Mm. finished. I'm doing copy edits and, you know, I don't know. Yes, but I did it, but I've been writing and rewriting some version of this since like 2003 you know, like, because it's I, essentially it's my life, you know, it's like, it just, you have to keep rewriting because things, new things happen. And so I think that like, yes, everything sort of can change. Like I have stuff that I wrote about in the book that definitely like changed after the book was done. Like there were, there were new things that happened after. And I was like, well, it was true when I wrote it. Like that became my mantra after I finished and turned it on the copy edits. I was like, nothing I can do now. This was it. And I had to like end it somehow. And I also think that it's, it's good to write about things over a long period of time and then look back at it because how we feel about things in the moment is so different than how we feel about things in retrospect. And the wisdom that we get throughout the years is really important to having a proper proper reflection on our lives. Yes, that's all very true. And yet still very hard. (laughs) It's so hard. It's hard, yeah. 
<laughs> I'm actually terrified to like, I have to go in and do the edits, but I don't want to read it again. Cause I know I'm going to find like a thousand other things I want to like totally change. So I don't know. It's like sitting over there. I don't want to touch it. <laughs> it's so, it's so hard. You just have to, you just have to say I'm done now, like, and give yourself permission to be sort of done and done with this portion of your life too. And, and then also there's the thing of like a year after the book comes out, you're going to feel totally, even with my fiction, I feel totally different about it a year later, whatever I was trying to say then now I see, oh, I had my blind spots about myself and my opinions and things like that. And so this, I, I don't even really want to, I'm glad you're going to read from it right now. Cause I am not ready to read from it. Oh my gosh. Yet, it's so, so good. It's so <laughs> oh, good. There were so many times I stopped and I was like, screenshotting, which is like, you know, the electronic equivalent of underlining. <laughs> but, I'll take it. All right. Well, this is just one random paragraph, but I just thought it was so beautifully written. The only kind of makeup I have ever really loved is lipstick. I love all the bright colors, wild, hysterical pinks that turn a dull outfit up, poke a hole in a gray day, or bright, sexy, sultry reds that stain my lips for hours marked in some way. I like the way lipstick can interact with my eyes, which I feel most of the time are happier on their own, undressed. I like thinking about my mouth after many years of not thinking about it at all. A thing I like on my face, I can confirm it. My mouth, I will decorate that. It took me many years to arrive at that place to find a thing I wanted to paint. Mm, it's so good okay that was great that was so great I do love lipstick don't you oh my gosh I have a few more (laughs) I'm going to keep reading you said even when sadness is not stated of course it can be deeply felt a shroud of sadness was how I had thought of it described it to people as I got older I just like that shroud of sadness oh okay last one Well, maybe not last one, but something else. You said, there are plenty of reasons why I write. This is just one of them. The sense that I want to own something, own my work, own my creativity, own my name. It is perhaps not the purest reason, not truest of heart, for there is some ego attached to it, but it is real. I own these words. I own these ideas. Here is my book. It's so good, Jamie. Oh my God. I I just, I mean, how can you read that and not want to like be like, this is going to be amazing. Thank you. That's nice of you. And, and you did a very good reading. I appreciate oh, it. thank you. Yes, I can keep going, but you know, I'm for hire. You did, just let me know. I'll show up next time you go on your road trip around the country. <laughs> I'm happy to, to show up. You know, one of the sort of themes, I guess, or from the motherless daughter section of the book, which I found so interesting, right? This whole, like, is everybody nowadays is like inherited trauma, this and blah, 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 blah. But yours is like, what do you do when you grow up having lost something you never even knew? Like, and what does that absence do to your present? And how does that form who you are as like a woman and a daughter when there's this hovering loss? So I don't know, maybe you could just talk a little bit more about that. Well, I mean, I, I have, when I write it in fiction a lot, I I, talk, I write a lot about families. That's usually, usually how people know me for writing about these dysfunctional families. And I think a lot about like what we kind of, take from our parents and what we blame our parents for and how long we're allowed to blame our parents for anything at all. And so it was for me, I, you know, my mother's mother passed away when she was really young. And, and so she was just, she missed her, you know, I think she missed her and I don't want to speak on my mother's behalf, but it's something that is felt when someone else, someone in your life is like missing somebody else, or you have a, I think it sort of instilled an empathy in me as also as well, probably feeling that way about her, like noticing this. And there was sort of like a hovering ghost in a way, Mm -hmm. you know, that shroud that you're talking about, like she wasn't there, but like she was sort of felt or the idea of her was felt. And so I think it's about like acknowledging that other person's feelings and, and sadness and, and learning from it, but then kind of not taking it on yourself too much. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's about kind of moving on from it. Like, every experience in my life, whether it's good or bad, I'm always like, what did I learn from this? And also how do I get to move on from it too? Yeah. That's, I mean, yes. In calmer moments, that's what I take out of most situations. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You even, you had a line about your grandmother and you did this beautiful sort of examination of her photo. And you said, you know, I am childless and one day what is going to happen to this picture? It's going to end up in the garbage somewhere. And of course, like really all of our stuff is going to end up in the garbage one day. I think about this all all the time. 
books behind you on the shelf. I'm like looking at them going, I hope somebody like keeps them. I don't know if you have kids or not, but oh yeah, because it's a mother show. So <laughs> you have kids. It's not the mother show. <laughs> <laughs> no, I said it's a mother show. Yeah, no, it's no. A show about mothers. Uh, yeah. So you must have kids. So hopefully they'll hold on to all of those books for you. I do but, have four kids. Yeah, it's all like it's all it's all just objects. So it's like, how do we like enjoy the things that we have while we're while we're still alive? And but also I want to say, like as a book person, like the greatest thing about books is that they have like an incredible lifespan because how many books do you pick up on a stoop, you know, or like check out of the library, live in the library forever, or like stuff that you read in high school that you still remember years and years later. And you, you know, you can bond with somebody over that kind of thing. You know, just read Mrs. Bridge. Ever read Mrs. Bridge? It was, uh, it's such a good book. And I've had so many people tell me to read it over the years. And I finally read it in, in my book club that I'm in. And it's like, I think one of the greatest books I've ever read. And it was like published, you know, decades ago. And I just, if it wasn't for this book club, I wouldn't have picked it up. Do you know what I mean? And, and it's still alive and somebody's still putting it out there. So, you know, objects are, I don't know, they're, they're important, but also, yeah, they can go in the car, garbage too. Yeah. I mean, having cleaned out people's apartments of those who have passed away right, a couple of times, you know, like you realize that everything just needs to be sorted, right? Like once I did that for the first time, I was like, I've never looked at things the same way. Right. Cause like, I don't want to, who's going to have to go through all this stuff. Like, did, did you write about this? Did I write about this? I mean, I wrote about it a little in my memoir. Oh, I would write about that. Yeah. You could write a, not that I want to tell you what to do, but you could like, you wrote about a little bit in your book. So like for me, like I'm writing all these essays right now and there's stuff that I like wrote about a little bit in my book that I'm kind of expanding on to write. And that this is, you know, this is sorry. This is like business talk, whatever, but don't, don't say sorry. I love <laughs> but, this. This is like my life. I think and- you should, I think you should, when your book comes out, you should write a bigger essay about what you just talked about. And so there's a little bit of in your book. And then I would just like expand upon it and write about it in a really big way. Cause you kind of sparked up thinking about it. So I feel like there's more to tell in that story. So okay. this is my prescription for you is to write about and I would write it for like, you know, real simple. Okay. That's who I would write it for. I have yeah. an, an essay coming out in real simple, actually, though. In oh, February, you do? Oh, well, not, then. They might not want me to write another one. But, <laughs> but something like that, do you know what I mean? Like, I think it's, it'll, it's just like a, a, it allows you, it's like an object that allows you to put a bunch of emotions into it or yeah. that idea that, and I can see it in your face. Oh. This is a podcast, I know, but I can see it in your face that you feel something about that. And actually I've never had to do that before. Organize somebody's office or uh, organize somebody's life like that. Tell me, sorry. Tell me more about it. Oh my gosh. First of all, you're amazing. Second of all, I'm so <laughs> glad because normally when I'm interviewing people or, you know, on this podcast or whatever, I'm always the one being like, I think you should write an essay about this. Like, I feel like I'm always telling people like you should write an essay about that. And it's people aren't usually telling me that. So I, love it that you said that to me, you know, cause it's true. And yeah, I will, I'll write an essay about it, but anyway. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. So why, why, why did we even bring this up? <laughs> uh, why was I talking about objects? You, oh, oh, because, because, my oh, gra- because you're, yeah. because, because of what you said about your grandmother's picture. Yeah. And sort of the, how life just sort of passes us by and what, what does happen to everything. Right. Anyway. But I think what you're saying too, about books being able to transcend time. I was just talking to somebody yesterday about you know, like pictures and all that. And where do you keep videos and right, all of the changing technology, everything else that is not printed and in hand is lost. Right. I, I'm like, Oh no, I'll never lose those emails. I'll just put them in this folder. And now I can't even find the inbox from that computer and whatever. And yet, you know, the letters from my grandmother or the books on the shelf, like is the only thing that can really transcend time forever and that doesn't get mm. lost. Yeah, for sure. I've just sort of given up on everything except for my for my books. Like in terms of what I'm leaving behind for my words, like I don't, like I think like I have my Twitter account set up to auto-delete every once a week. What? I've just, I've just arrived at a place where I'm like, I love your, not tw- I love your tweets, by the but way. I was like, it's this so is funny. not my best work at all. And so I just decided it's, it's and it's not really what I want to be putting out there. Like, I think it's funny and it's, and I've had other people argue with me about it. Other writers that are like, that's the whole point of it. It's supposed to be kind of carefree and careless, but I've been on social media for like an online for so many years, like for since like the late nineties, that's when I had my first like website, blog, online journal, whatever it was called then online journals is what it was called then. And I don't, 
I don't know. I just think my books are my be- are the best thing that I do. And that's the thing I want people to like remember me for. So, and I put so much work into them and I don't put any work into my Twitter account at all. So <laughs> it's fun though. I like, I'm not talking, I'm not like saying like Twitter, I mean, Twitter is evil in many ways, but like I have gotten so much out of it and I've met so many people and I talk about it a little bit in the book later on in the book about how I like am able to, you know, how it's expanded my life, all the friends that I've met online, all the other writers, like the way that it's opened up the world to me. Although I will say to my credit, it's because I'm open to it, right? Like I think some people can go on social media and it's just this tiny little box and they just want to be stuck in this little box and they want to like gripe, gripe, gripe or you know, it's not, they're not really using, they're using it in a way that is different than the way that I use it. The way that I use it is like, this is just an extension of like who I am as a person and an artist. And I always think there's like the spectrum of, of writing that I have. And on one end is like a tweet and on the other end is a book. And then in between it's like, you know, essays and Instagram posts. And I have a craft newsletter that's kind of in the middle of all of that. And, and so the stuff that's on the, the tweet end is like, not great. <laughs> it's just not, not great. I mean, it's good if it entertains people, but it's not great. So anyway, it's what you want to use it for. I, I like to use it to, in a weird way, even though it's just a screen, I like to use it to help me get closer to people. I don't think that's weird. I think a lot of people use it that way. I think that people are desperate for connection right now. And on the producing side and the and the consuming side, consumption, production, whatever, like, I think it helps because like the things you write about on Twitter, I mean, what did you say this week? Is it something like, you know, like I've just had all this coffee and I'm doing all these emails and, like, <laughs> <laughs> and it just made me laugh because that's how I feel too. I'm like, Ooh. <laughs> sometimes I go on these email tears and I'm just like, okay, I've done like a hundred emails in like 20 minutes. What are people receiving the thing? You know, I'm like, you know, so it's that instant relatability, right? Cause you're writing about like these little moments, right. That everybody kind of feels and thinks, or it's true. Yeah. Yeah. I tweeted this morning that I talked to the guys in the coffee shop so that I would have someone to talk to before I talked to you. Oh, I didn't, I didn't want see you to that get. one. Oh no. <laughs> I didn't want to No, because it's, you just never know what's going to come out of your mouth first thing. So you gotta, you gotta have a practice run first, you know? So the coffee shop guys were the practice for me. So what did you guys yes. talk about? <laughs> We talked about what they did for Thanksgiving. We talked about if they had any plans for New Year's. They don't have any plans for New Year's yet. We talked about Zoom meetings and they're very young. And they were like, every time I look at myself on the camera, I'm like, can't believe how haggard I look. And I'm like, you guys are like, they're like babies. They're in their twenties. They're so cute with their little scruffy beards and everything like that. So we talked about that and that was it. That was enough. And I thanked them. I took a bone for my dog because they have free bones for dogs. Aww, that dog was my is, morning. Dog is right here. Ah, <laughs> buddy. Oh, <laughs> I love a dog. My constant <laughs> podcast companion. Oh, that's good. That's funny. So what? So the essays you're working on now are they for a collection, or you're just doing them for fun, or you're publishing them one off, or what are you thinking? S- I have just like a couple, I mean, I'm working on a novel now and, but then I've had to write some essays for, to promote the book. Right. So I did an essay for Real Simple. I did do one for Real Simple. That is about how I threw a a fancy 50th birthday party for myself. I'm really excited about that. I had such a good time at my birthday party. It was like, it was kind of like wild. Like I had all these people come in from out of town and We were all like, is it going to happen? Is it not going to happen? Because there's been so many things along the way that have gotten gotten in the way. So anyway, that's about that. And then I wrote a piece for Guardian Books. I don't know if I'm allowed. Well, this will come out after everything's out. So, And that I really love. And it's coming out on New Year's Day. And it's it's just about, it's kind of like almost like the book in like a really small 2000 word essay, but it's it's just about how, how just about fi- carving your own path. I mean, I really had such a like weird way to get to where I am now, but there really is no normal way to get there. So, I mean, I did all these, you know, I lived all over the country and I, and I didn't really start focusing on my rating until I was in my early thirties. And I did all, you know, I did do all these like millions of office jobs and things like that. And then once I started, I just loved it so much. I mean, it's just like the most fun thing in the world writing. And I just, all I wanted was just to do that. But even the first 
couple of books that I wrote just didn't even really do that well. It wasn't until my fourth book, The Middle Steams, that I actually started to like get somewhere with my writing. So where it got recognized in a bigger way. And I finally got my New York Times book review and all those, like I had three books with no New York Times book review. I mean, how many books get reviewed by the New York Times? I was going to say, most people don't get reviewed by the New York Times book review. Maybe people listening, I don't know. I mean, I feel like most of the people I have on the podcast maybe do, but most generally people do not. I mean, you can write lots of books and not get on. So anyway. It's true. You can be like, you know, sometimes it's it's fun when like somebody wins a big award and then the New York Times book review has to like go back and like <laughs> review it because they haven't reviewed it yet because, they're, you know, they have a finite amount of space and everything. All the review sections obviously have like shrunk in the last however many years. I mean, when I started out, my first book came out in 2006 and it was like, you could tour America. It made sense to tour America because all these news, local newspapers had review sections and you could do local press. And you know what I mean? Like yeah. there was like so much to do. And now it's like, there's only like, I like to go to all these places. Obviously during the pandemic, you can't really do very much, but I like to go to all of these places because I think it's, I don't think you should have to live in New York in order to have access to that kind of thing. Like I, I like going to like small university towns and things like that just to meet people. Also, like if you just were only in New York and LA or something like that, you would just only ever meet the same kind of people. Do you mm-hmm. know what I mean? So like, we're supposed to be writing about the whole world. Yeah, there, what do you mean? There are more <laughs> kinds of people? No, I'm kidding. Well, yeah. Right. You're supposed to be, you're supposed to like have like an eye towards the, anyway. I don't want to tell people how to live their lives, but I think it's like important to like see the whole world is what I'm trying to say. But yeah, so you could go and do all these kinds of like cool little events in little towns and there's like, and there's, and you still can really, but in terms of like a New York publisher, they're not going to like, it doesn't feel crucial to them to well, do it. You I will say, really justify it. <laughs> I am start, I've started my own publishing company. I don't know if you know, it's called Zivi Books and it, we launched, we announced it in September, but like one of the things, maybe I shouldn't even say this, but we wanted, I want to make like the Z-Mobile and like tour the authors and like have us all go all over to like all the towns. And we have all these ambassadors and all these places. And I want to go to like, have them go or have me go or whatever. And just like, I don't know. It, yeah. It's see cool. what it's all about. Yeah. Cause it's like, you know what? Like Chapel Hill is like so many amazing readers in Chapel Hill. Like anytime I've ever gone there or people that I know there, like they're like psyched to have, you know, people come through. I'm not saying that's a small town. It's a smaller city than New York is all I'm trying to say. Yeah. But like, there's so, there's just people out there who are really like hungry for it. I've done events like literally smallest town and people will drive from hours to go just to like, you know, because they know me from online or they've read my books or whatever it is. Or I do this, like this thousand words of summer project that I do that, you know, I've been doing it for like four years. And so there's people who do it and it means something to them in different places. So it's, I mean, I can't go to everywhere and really right now I can't go to anywhere or not, not that many places, but it means a lot to me when I've gone out there it definitely means a lot to me when I've gone out there in the world because it's just my way of connecting because I, you know, the life of a writer truly is just sitting at home by yourself (laughs) so much of the time, begging the coffee shop guys to talk to you (laughs) for a minute, you know, for a minute or something like that. So, and I don't know, I definitely feel like not to be cliched about, but like life is too short not to meet people or to talk to people or to connect with the world. It depends on what you want out of it. But for me, I like, I like to meet people. I love that. I do too. And yes, I love how you said that. Amazing. I feel like I could talk to you all day that we're like only have scratched the surface here and I'm like disappointed to have to go and like feel oddly left out that I didn't get to be a part of your 50th birthday, even though I met you five seconds ago. But anyway, you would have loved it. It was great. (laughs) I can't wait to read about it. What advice would you have for aspiring authors? And then I will let you go. I mean, I just think it's like read every day, write a little bit in your notebook, even if you're not like working. I just said that in quotation marks, if you're listening on podcast, like it's good to like connect with what you're working on, you know, be forgiving of yourself when you need to be forgiving yourself, reach out to people. You know, it's important to have a community. You don't have to be on your own through all of this. And I can't tell you like, big publishing advice because it's always moving at the speed of light. But I can say that it should not be torture. It should, you should be, you know, get something out of it that makes you feel good about yourself. That can apply to a lot of undertakings. (laughs) 
<laughs> it's just life, baby. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, thank you for starting your day by talking to me and the guys at the shop. And this has been so fun. And I can't yes. wait to read more stuff and follow along and keep laughing at your tweets and all the rest. So thank you, Zibby, and good luck with your, your new publishing house. Thank you. And I will I'll write that essay. Okay. <laughs> you suggested. All, all right. right. I'll see you later. Bye. Okay. Bye. Thanks for listening to this episode of Moms Don't Have Time to Read Books. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram at Zibby Owens and at Moms Don't Have Time to Read Books. Also sign up for my newsletter at ZibbyOwens.com and sign up for my virtual book club and meet lots of authors on Zoom every other week. Thanks so much to Steve and Ryan at Texture Sound for the sound editing. And thank you to Morning Moon Productions for providing this fantastic intro and outro music.